Hey there students, thank you for being part of this presentation. My name is Luis Silva and today we're looking at world history, the impact of the Enlightenment from about 1650 all the way to 1800. Let's move on. What was the impact of the Enlightenment? Enlightenment thinkers challenged the divine right of kings and also argued for liberty and rights. Also, Enlightenment thinkers met in places that became known as salons, where they would meet and talk about the different ideas. And with the help of the printing press, many of those ideas quickly spread throughout Europe. These theories or ideas inspire a variety of new ideas in the art, the music, gender, in terms of how females were treated, economics and also government. Now let's look at the impact of the Enlightenment in terms of culture. Enlightenment ideas of perfection and reason gave rise to what we know as neoclassical art. Art in the Enlightenment was fairly simple but elegant and focused on Greek styles as you can see from the images here. Continuing on with the impact of the Enlightenment in terms of culture, we have music. In this case, music composers created new elegant styles of music known as classical. Music became a popular art that people went to concerts to hear. And as you can see, we have three different names of big people, basically, that were instrumental in terms of the development of music. We have Franz Joseph Haydn, which created the first symphony. We have Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, which set a new standard for originality. And we also have Beethoven, which used emotion and range to move music beyond the classical style. Very important people. Now, the impact of the Enlightenment in terms of economics. One of the most important Enlightenment ideas was the theory of capitalism and lies of fair economics by a Scottish professor Adam Smith. If you can see to the right, you can pause this video to read that is how capitalism is basically described. Capitalism is an economic model based on private ownership of property and desire to make profits. Laissez-faire is the idea that the economy thrives when the government does not interfere with businesses and allows a free market to exist. As you can see also to the right, a free market analysis, it's basically a cycle which starts with individuals that demand goods. From there, you go to the producers which create goods and hire labor. From there, you go to the product market which sells goods and services and hires laborers. Basically, capitalism explained fairly simple. And here we have the idea of supply and demand. According to Adam Smith, price is determined by supply and demand. As you can see here from the image to your right, you have basically demand, you have supply, and then you have an equilibrium price. Let's move on. Now, the impact of the Enlightenment in terms of new ideas. During the Enlightenment, people throughout Europe and America began to study, read, and philosophize about new ideas. To collect these new ideas and make them accessible to many people, a gentleman known as Dennis Diderot created the first encyclopedia. The encyclopedia included essays and sketches on a wide variety of political, scientific, and cultural ideas. The encyclopedia spread the ideas of the Enlightenment and scientific revolution throughout Europe as well as many other parts of the world. Now let's look at the impact of the Enlightenment, in this case for females. Most Europeans had a traditional view of women as housewives, mothers, and not equal to men. But the Enlightenment inspired efforts to improve the status of women across Europe and across the world. Madame Geoffrey hosted salons and she was able to speak her mind out and she spoke about how females should be treated equal to men and have the same rights as men. Another very important female was Mary Wollstonecraft, which argued for more opportunities for 
education and professions for women not only in Europe but across the world. Let's move on to the impact of the Enlightenment and in this case for the kings. Enlightenment philosophers attacked absolute kings like Louis XIV and Peter the Great. Most philosophers believed that the best form of government was a limited monarchy that respected the rights of its citizens. Some powerful monarchs, known as enlightened despots, listened to these new ideas of the Enlightenment thinkers and tried to improve the lives of their citizens. Now let's look at changing ideas, the right to govern. Old ideas said that a monarch's rule is justified by divine right. New ideas basically said that a government's power comes from the consent of those ones that were being governed. Now let's look at changing ideas, in this case relationship between the ruler and the state. Old idea said that the state and its citizens exist to serve the monarch. As Louis XIV reportedly said, I am the state. Now, new ideas basically said the monarch exists to serve the state and support citizens' welfare. As Frederick the Great said, a ruler is only the first servant of the state. Moving on, let's look at Enlightenment despots. Enlightenment despots favor religious tolerance, tax reforms, reduced government spending, and legal rights. Frederick the Great of Prussia granted religious freedom abolish torture, and also improve education for its citizens. Catherine the Great frequently wrote to Voltaire and considered protecting the rights of her citizens. Joseph II of Austria granted freedom of speech, press, religion, and it required peasants to pay or to be paid for work they did, which was something new around this time period. Now let's look at the impact of the Enlightenment in terms of revolution. As the Enlightenment ideas spread across the world, citizens began to question the authority of their kings or their rulers. As you can see here from this presentation, the information that is provided to you talks about the Enlightenment. To the left, you have Enlightenment ideas, and at the middle, you have how those ideas of the Enlightenment were able to spread across the world. Remember, the printing press was very important because those ideas were written and that those ideas went from one place to another place to another place and changed people across the world. Now, the Enlightenment ideas came to the Americas and those ideas served as a motive for many colonists to reject the way Great Britain was treating them. And that this led to the colonists declaring independence from Great Britain. On top of that, they were able to defeat Great Britain and they were able to establish a republic. As a result of the Enlightenment ideas, revolutionary wars broke out in America, France, and Latin America for independence as well as liberty. We have come to the end of this presentation. Please make sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next presentation.